we just want to declare a blessing over you this morning. We serve just such an amazing God that whatever you need from him, that you can lift it in the atmosphere, that it is yours. Amen. Lord bless you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, bless you. shine upon and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, we say
Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us online today, and I hope you're enjoying the service. And I'm pretty sure that you are because we continue to hear from so many different people how much they appreciate us bringing these services to you each week. And while we certainly look forward to the time where we can gather together again, actually in the flesh, it is so great that we can use technology to come into your homes each and every week. You know, we talk about how we are one church in two locations, and we are Danville and Lafayette. But the fact of the matter is, is right now we are one church in many locations because your home is a gathering place where the church is meeting. We are gathering together in our homes right now. What's so cool and what's so awesome about that is it doesn't matter where we are because God is ever-present. He's always with us. He can be in one big place together with us, or he can be in many different places um, all at the same time. And so that's what matters most. So once again, thank you for being a part of these services. I want to get right into what I want to share with you today, and I'm looking so forward to the message that I have prepared for you. And I'm going to begin it today, but the truth of the matter, the fact of the matter is, is I'm going to spend several weeks talking to you about this. I'm going to spend a couple of weeks this week, next week. Then John and Britt are going to be bringing a word to you for a couple of weeks. And then when I come back again, I'm going to pick right up from what I'm going to begin sharing with you today and just continue on with it because I had so much material, I just knew I couldn't get it all into one or two services. So again, I'm excited about what I have to share with you. The title of this teaching and this short series is The Essentials. And obviously that's a word that we're hearing a lot right now. It's a word that's being used to define the services that are considered essential. While we're in this season of lockdown, the word essential means absolutely necessary, indispensable, and there are things that are absolutely necessary, indispensable, no matter what's going on in our world. You still have to eat. You still have to be able to go to the hospital uh, when you get sick. Hopefully you don't get sick, but thank God the hospital is there if you do. And the banks, institutions like that all have to be in place. So those are all defined as essentials. I think it's also been a little interesting, uh, maybe a little confusing, if not downright concerning, As to uh, some of the things that are considered essential, though, uh, I thought it was a little interesting that liquor stores and marijuana stores are all considered essential right now. And uh, hadn't been all that long ago that if you'd had marijuana on you, you'd have probably been going to jail. And I just, you know, I happen to know that, uh, you know, personally from many, many years ago, not any time recently, but that certainly was the case. My wife was absolutely thrilled to discover that Fannie Mae Candies is open at this time, and uh, she keeps trying to get me to stop there, but we're watching our diet while we're on lockdown, and so uh, I haven't given in. But again, I think it's kind of funny that it is open, but while the doors to so many uh, things are open, uh, the doors to the church remain closed. So grocery stores, lumber stores, they're all full, but the church is empty, so that tells you that the world doesn't consider the church to be essential. Now, I, you know, obviously take issue with that. I believe it is essential. And while we are honoring uh, the wishes, the instructions of uh, our our government and our governor, uh, and we are, uh, you know, sheltering at home, sheltering in place, uh, we still very much believe that the church is essential. And that's why we are uh, bringing these services to you each and every week. So I have a question for you. Who's deciding what's essential in your life right now? Is it the politicians and the government? Because uh, while that might be okay in some things, it's certainly not okay in all things. What the government deems essential and what God deems essential in our lives may uh, well be very different. So what are the essentials in our life right now? What are the things that are absolutely necessary They are indispensable in order for us to thrive and to live victoriously, uh, not just in this season that we're in in our life right now, but in any season that we're in in our lives. It's just highlighted now because of the challenges we're uh, facing with the coronavirus and the things that are happening 
uh, with the economy and so forth. Well, the Bible actually teaches us what is essential, and so I think it's important that we always look to God's Word. We just find out what God says matters and what God says is essential and uh, absolutely necessary in our lives as His people. And so the things that I'm going to talk about, there are actually five of them. And as I said, I'm going to spend about four weeks talking to you about those five things. But the first one is a strong and growing relationship with the Lord. And I'm going to talk to you about that today. And then uh, next week, I want to talk to you about the second essential, which I believe is a solid foundation that's built on God's Word. And then the next essential is a faith that is alive and strong. And then I also believe the Bible teaches us that the next essential is a hope that endures. And then last but not least, I want to talk to you about having strength and courage that carry us the distance and enable us to stay the course. So again, I'm excited about talking to you about each one of those. But this morning, let's talk about this first essential. And I really do believe that it is the most needful, the most necessary thing in all of our life, and that is a strong, growing relationship with God. You need a relationship with Him that's strong, and it should be growing stronger all the time. You need a relationship with Him where you know who He is, and what He can, and what He also will do in your life. And you need a relationship with Him that you're secure in, and that you're confident in, especially Uh, when we're in a time like we're in right now. You know, I think we'd all agree that now is not the time to have a shallow or a so-so relationship with God. And I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are joining not just us online, but so many different churches online, because they realized when all of this hit, hey, I, you know, really need to get a little closer to God than what I am right now. I really need to, uh, you know, build up Uh, and become stronger in my relationship with God. And man, that's quite all right. Whatever drives us to God, whatever draws us to Him, it doesn't really matter. God just wants us to be in relationship with Him. And we always need to have a strong relationship with God, but we seem to be uh, more aware of that need in times like this. And you may be thinking right now, well, you know, that's the problem I really don't have a great relationship with God. I certainly don't think I have a strong relationship with God. And can I tell you, that's okay too for the moment, because the fact of the matter is most of us, the thing that uh, caused us to grow in our relationship with God and draw closer to God was some kind of a challenging time in our life. Might not, might not have been this challenging time, but it was a challenging time of some kind And because of that, man, we began to dive in and say, God, we need more of you. We recognize our need of you, and we begin to grow in our relationship with the Lord. You having a relationship with God is really what Jesus uh, is all about, and it's why he came. You know, I think a lot of times people get the idea that Jesus came just so when we die, we could go to heaven. And, you know, thank God that is uh, true. When we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and we do leave this world because we know him, we will make heaven our home. That's a great hope. That's an awesome thing to rest in and to be very secure in. But the truth is there's so much more uh, behind the whole purpose of God sending Jesus Christ to this earth. And the primary reason was because God wanted to be in relationship with you and I. And because uh, you and me, because of our sins, our sin had separated us from God. We were not in right relationship with him. And we were not able uh, in our own ability to uh, gain uh, that right relationship with God back. We couldn't be good enough to earn it. And so God, knowing the price that needed to be paid, that blood needed to be shed uh, in order to pay the penalty for our sins. God, the Bible says, so loved us, so much wanted to be in relationship with us that he sent his one and only son. And Jesus went to the cross and he died there, shed his blood for you and I so that we could very simply by believing on him, enter into a relationship with God. And not just a relationship that takes us to heaven, but a relationship with where we walk with God through this life. 
And I want you to think about that, knowing that you're in relationship with God, being able to walk with Him in life. Man, that just ought to totally change your whole perspective and uh, uh, the way you go through life. You ought to go through life with a whole lot more confidence than you would if you were without God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17-18, through 18, it says this. It says, whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. So if you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, here's one of the things that have, has happened in your life. You've become a new creation. You're not the old person you were. If you hear someone say, you know, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, that's actually not accurate. You were an old sinner and you did get saved by grace. But the moment you got saved by that grace, you became a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're a child of God now. And I love the rest of this passage. The old way of living has disappeared and a new way of living has come into existence. God has done all this. He has restored, watch this, He has restored our relationship with Him through Christ. Again, that's what sending Jesus to the cross was all about. God wanted so much to be in a relationship with you and me. And even though it meant sending his son to die in our place, he was willing to do that. What a love he had for us to give up Jesus on our behalf, just so that we could be in relationship with him. And I want you to notice that being in a relationship with God actually changes everything about your life. It doesn't just, you know, make a little difference and make you feel a little better. It actually changes everything about your life. He says the old way of living uh, is gone. It has disappeared and a new way of living has come into existence. So that's how much difference being in relationship with God makes in our life. That's how much of a difference uh, knowing Jesus should make in all of our life. It should absolutely change everything about our lives. So let me ask you, has being in relationship with Jesus, has it really changed your life uh, you know, in dynamic ways. If it hasn't, it should have. And it's simply because you are not aware of what your relationship with God really is all about and just how big of a difference it ought to make in your life. Man, I mean, it ought to change you. It ought to change the way you approach your life. It ought to change the way you face life challenges. It ought to change everything about you. So Christianity, we need to realize, is... Not just a religion. I think that's what people try to reduce it down to sometimes. It's not about being religious. It's about being in a relationship with God. And God doesn't just want us to know about Him. He wants us to have a relationship with Him. And He wants it to be a relationship that's like any other relationship that matters to us in life. It's a relationship that should be growing and becoming stronger uh, all the time. And uh, that's what God's desire is, uh, that we be growing in our relationship with Him. And it actually ought to be your desire also. And one of the best examples of that is found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. And it's the Apostle Paul speaking. And what's interesting here is a guy who is in relationship with God. I mean, he has received Jesus. He's preaching the gospel, you know, all over the place. In fact, He is writing the gospel as he goes. He uh, ends up writing two-thirds of the New Testament. So, uh, I mean, Paul certainly is someone who knew the Lord. But listen to what he said his purpose was and really what the cry of his heart was when it came to knowing God in a greater dimension. I'm going to read this passage out of the Amplified Bible because I love the way it reads. He says, For my determined purpose is that I may know him. And that word there, that word know there is not know in kind of a casual way. It's a word uh, that denotes intimacy. It's like Adam knew Eve, uh, if you get the drift. Obviously, you do. And God wants us to know him in that kind of an intimate way. And then, then he goes on and he says that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens progressively, but it ought to be happening progressively. We ought to be becoming uh, more deeply and intimately acquainted with our God. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person. Because there's so much to the person of God. There's so much about God that we need to grasp. He is so much to us. He is everything to us. 
He's our savior, certainly, but he's also our, our comforter. He's our strength. He's our provider. He's our healer. Again, he is just absolutely everything we need him to be, but we need to know him in those different dimensions. He says, I want to know the wonders of his person more strongly, more clearly, and that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which he exerts over believers. So Paul said, I want to know him. I want to know this God that I'm in relationship with even better. And I want to become progressively more acquainted with him. Can I tell you, Paul undoubtedly understood that knowing God uh, impacted every aspect of his life. And so he wanted to know him as well as he possibly could so that this relationship could make the kind of difference in his life that it was supposed to make. In him personally, for sure. In the way he lived his life, absolutely. But also as far as God's purpose and and uh, desire for his life, the mission that God had for Paul to carry out personally. All of that came about as a result of Paul getting to know God better and better and better. I wonder how much more you and I would enter into in our lives if we just made our determined purpose to progressively come to know this God that we serve more deeply and more intimately, to become more acquainted with who he desires to be to us in every aspect of our life. I want you to also notice that Paul connects knowing God with experiencing his power in our life. I thought about that. And can I tell you, there's no doubt that the more you become acquainted with God, the more you get to know him, the more you're going to realize and see his power at work in your life because you're going to start expecting his power to be at work in your life. You're going to start making a demand upon his power because you know he is uh, those things to you. He says that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection. Man, there's resurrection power that's available to us. Why do we get so fearful when we are facing times like we are right now? Maybe it's because we don't really truly understand that we're in relationship with God. And it's certainly from not knowing who God desires to be in our lives and all of the promises that he's made us concerning our life. He's promised to keep us. I want to talk to you about that here in just a moment. And if we really were secure in our relationship with him, I'm just going to tell you, I don't really think there would be much uh, that would come along in life that would shake us. So you're never really going to truly know God's power in your life, especially on a daily basis, until you come to know him in a better way, in a greater way, in greater dimensions. You know, it's so important for us to know him and to know him well. And we we know that at Life Church, we believe that at Life Church. In fact, our vision uh, you know, really is all about that. In fact, I don't, you know, I don't know if we've uh, stated our vision, uh, you know, here recently probably have, but our vision for everyone who comes through our doors. And right now you're not coming through our doors, but we're coming in to your home. And our vision for you, whether you're coming through our doors or sitting right there in your house, is that you would know God, that you would find freedom, that you would discover your purpose and that you would make a difference in this world. And can I tell you, every one of those things is so very, very important, but the last three really rest upon the first. You gotta know God. Because when you really come to know God is whenever you're gonna begin to go free from the things that have you in bondage because you're gonna realize he doesn't want you in bondage. He wants you being free. He wants you living free. You're his child. He didn't want you in bondage to this world or to the enemy in any way, shape, or form. You're going to discover, you know what? God's got a purpose for my life, and it's a big purpose. He's got things for me to do while I'm here on planet Earth, and you're going to realize that you can make a difference because you got God on your side. you got God working on your behalf, and you got God working through you as you uh, live in this world. Those are all things that God wants to do in your life, but they all come first and foremost from just knowing who we are, knowing that we're in relationship with God. In fact, everything in your walk with God 
comes from and hinges on your relationship with God. Everything comes out of that relationship. Your faith, your faith rises out of your relationship with God. Your strength, I mean, it comes from knowing you have God on your side. Your stability, your peace, your peace comes from knowing that God is always with you. Uh, your joy, all of those things come from knowing Him. But can I tell you, one of the things that maybe is most important right now for you to realize is that your confidence, your confidence comes from your relationship with God. Your confidence, especially in the face of life's challenges, comes from just knowing God and being very confident in your relationship with Him. Think about David, who walks out on this battlefield that you know, no, none of the soldiers of the army of Israel will even go out and fight. Here's David, a 17-year-old. We kind of maybe will write it off to his youth. He's young and dumb. Can I tell you, he's not young and dumb. The difference between David and those soldiers was is David knew his God. And the way we know that is, is when Saul says, hey, listen, you're not able to do this. You're just a boy. And he's been a fighter. He's been a warrior since he was, you know, a boy. You can't do it. And David said, hey, listen, I just got news for you. I'm a shepherd and I tend my father's sheep. There was a lion came against my father's sheep one day and I grabbed him by the beard and I killed him. There was a bear who came out and I killed that bear. And the same God, watch this, he's, he knows where all of his victories have come from. And so he's so very confident in this moment because of his relationship with God. He said, the very same God who gave me victory over the lion and the bear will give me victory over this giant also. Can I tell you, the very same God who has brought us through everything we've been through up to this time and has delivered us out of the things that we've uh, found ourselves in uh, over the years, that's the very same God who's going to bring us through these things. And we ought to be confident in that, but it comes from being confident in our relationship with God. If anybody ought to be confident, you and I should be. In 1 John 5, 14, it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is the confidence that we have in him. I have a question. Are you confident in him? Do you have confidence confidence that he's going to bring you through this? Do you have confidence that he's going to hear your prayers right now? Whatever it is you're praying and asking him to do, wherever you're asking him to move on your behalf, are you confident that he's going to do that? You ought to be. You need to be. He wants you to be. God wants you to be that confident in your relationship with him. I want to close with one other passage here. And it's out of 2 Timothy, and it's the Apostle Paul speaking again. And I want you to listen to what he says. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. And I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Paul says, I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded. I'm confident that he is able to keep everything that I have committed to him until that day. That's the kind of confidence every one of us ought to have as people of God. God loves us. God is for us. God is with us. God is all the while at work in us and working together for our good. If anybody ought to have confidence right now in this life and what we're going through, it ought to be the people of God. Can I tell you, not anybody else can keep you safe but God can keep you safe. And I want to close by just building your faith a bit by reading you some verses that I just found so, uh, you know, faith building. And I just wanted to share them with you. Listen to these, Proverbs 18, 10. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and they are safe. We're going to be safe if we run to the Lord. We don't have to run to the Lord and worry. We can run to the Lord and rest and be, because we know that we're safe. Uh, Psalms 4.8, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Psalms 37.3, Trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. I'm going to be safe during this time, and God's going to take care of me uh, during this time and take care of you also. Proverbs 29.25, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, 
but trusting the Lord means safety. Uh, Psalms 46 verse 1, God, you're such a powerful or a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in time of trouble. More than enough, always available whenever I need you. Do you believe that? Are you confident that he's always available? Last one, Psalms 125 verses 1 and 2 out of the Passion Bible. Those who trust in the Lord are as unshakable, as unmovable, as mighty Zion. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord's wraparound presence surrounds his people, protecting them now and forever. Can I tell you, right now, God, God's wraparound presence is endeavoring to wrap around you. He wants you to be confident in your relationship with him. He wants you to be at peace during this time that we're in right now, knowing that he's there for you, knowing that he's going to keep you, knowing that he's going to take care of you and bless you and prosper you. You are safe and you are secure in him. Absolutely. I want to pray with you before I close. And I especially want to pray for anyone today who maybe you feel like, you know, I, I am not in a good place with the Lord at all. I have no confidence when it comes to going to God because of the life that I've lived and, and everything that I've done. Well, we can take care of that right now. In fact, by just praying this very simple prayer, all of your past can be dealt with. It can be put behind you at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It can disappear. And new life can come to you right now just by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It's that simple. So I want you, if you would, Right there, where you're, wherever you're sitting, uh, you know, in a car, at home, whatever, pray this prayer. Make it your prayer. Invite Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. That's where a relationship with God comes from. Let's pray this. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for the price that he paid for me on Calvary's cross. I received Jesus as my Savior, and I make him the Lord of my life. Now, I want to thank you for saving me. I'm your child, and you're my father. From this moment on, I'm going to get to know you better and better. I'm going to be confident in my relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for praying that prayer, and thank every one of you so much for being a part of our services today. God bless you, and we love you.
Good morning, Kids Life. I miss Patty, and oh, how I miss your beautiful, shining, smiley faces. Hey, before we get ready for praise and worship, let's go over our four core values. One, love God because he loved us first. Two, love people because God loves all people. Three, do your best and God will do the rest. Four, have fun. Now let's all stand and get ready for praise and worship. Does anybody know an awesome way to connect to God? Shout it out, let me hear it. Ooh, those are some good guesses. I like that one. But let me tell you about the one I was thinking of. How about we sing a song to God? Like when we give him our full attention and tell him how great he is. When we worship, it connects us with God because we thank him for everything he's done for us. So let's get on our feet and connect to God together.
is greater than no one is bigger than no one is stronger than hey no one is greater than <laughs> yes, it would be like that. That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on in here? Oh, we're just teaching Jaden the official worship signals. Well, what's that? I'm, I'm not following. You know, the things people do when they're singing worship music in church. For example, this, the hold my TV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I did this on Sunday. This is the touchdown. I. <laughs> oh, uh, what about this one? Oh, I know this one. It's uh, the Hold My Burrito. Oh, I've only ever heard it called the Hold My Baby. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's a rather large burrito. <laughs> we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name's Jaden, and this is the time we learned why and how we worship. Oh, hi. Welcome to Connect HQ. I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. My name's Bree. I heard this was the place to come if I have questions about God. You heard right. My name's Jaden. It's nice to meet you. So, how can we help you? Well, I'm interested in learning more about worship, why we worship God, and different ways we can worship God. Oh, well, I'm going to worship night at my church tonight. You're welcome to come with me. Actually, I was hoping I could study worshipers in their natural habitat, if that's possible. Oh, uh, what? I'm a researcher. I like to learn from people by watching what they do naturally. Do you think you could help me do that? Well, um, Mike, if you want to show Bree around HQ, I can start working on tracking down some links. Sure thing. Bree, I will be your tour guide. Wonderful. I have an outfit brought up for you. Do what now? Hey, uh, Brie, khaki's not really my color, by the way. Nobody wears khaki because they like the color, Mike. Now, who's that? It's Rodney. He looks like a good first subject. Okay, so what do we do now? We wait for the worshiping to start. <sighs> oh my goodness, I didn't realize how late it was. Only a couple hours until I have to leave for church. God, Please help me find the right links for Brie. I don't want to miss out on worshiping you tonight. Thanks. Amen. Okay. Reverse. Let's see what I can find. Brie! How long are we going to sit here? How long does it take a person to start worshiping? It's not something you can plan on. 
Hey, I have an idea. Here, you stay here. I'm going to go talk to him like I normally would. I promise it will not interfere with your study. Thinking on your feet. I like it. Do it. <laughs> ah! Ah! Where did you come from, Mike? <laughs> <sighs> And what are you wearing? Uh, I am trying out a new uniform. Okay. I don't think khaki's your color. I know, right? Oh, so what are you doing? I'm just looking over footage from the outside that I took earlier this week. Look at that mountain, it's beautiful. Good job, Rodney. <laughs> well, it's not me. It's God. God made that mountain. And God made every tree. And every bird, God made everything that we see and everything that we don't see, no matter how big or small. That's, that's amazing. For sure, God is awesome. God is awesome. And I need to do something to show him how awesome I think he is. God deserves my worship. God deserves my worship. That's a great point, Rodney. I know what I have to do. Hmm? Impromptu worship dance party time! Impromptu worship dance party time! talking about how amazing it was that God created the mountains and the trees and the birds. That's one reason why we worship God, because he created everything in the universe. He created you, he created me, he created our friends and family. And because of that, he is worthy of our worship. Ooh, which, which ties in perfectly with the verse link I just found. Do you want me to teach it to you? Of course. Okay, so it's from the book of Revelation, chapter four, verse 11. Revelation 4, 11. Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God. You are worthy, our Lord and God. To receive glory and honor and power. To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. For you created all things. When we realize how much God deserves our worship, we can't help but worship him. That's why Rodney started playing worship music and dancing. Those are two ways to worship God. And that's why I'm so excited to go to worship night at my church. Fascinating. This is fascinating. Thank you both for your help. Oh, um, I'm gonna go get started on those Bible links. I don't wanna miss out on worshiping tonight. Great, so you ready to get back out there, Bree? Let's see what new subjects we can find. Hey, Bree, do you wanna, I don't know, go to a different room? I think we could like climb into the vents and Watch the quiet time group pray. I don't mind staying here. I once hid in a tree in the African savanna for three days trying to catch a glimpse of a wild king cheetah. You and I have lived very different lives. Shh. I think somebody's coming. I am checking the squeakiness of chairs. <laughs> yep, still squeaky. So, what are you working on? Well, I'm working on some new ideas for a skit vision video. Ooh, what about? Rodney suggested that we make a video about worshiping God and all the different ways that you can do that. I just love it. So I volunteered to make a list of all the different ways. Ooh, so what do you have on the list so far? A lot of things. Singing and dancing, of course, but also things like raising your hands up to God while you worship, listening to him quietly, serving others, giving to those in need, and writing about him like I am right now. It is so awesome that God gave us so many ways to worship him. I know, and I love that I can help other people figure out ways to worship God too. Wow, well, good luck on that video. I've got more chairs to test for squeakiness. Ooh, bye. No idea there were so many different ways to worship God. It's amazing. I know, it's not just music and dancing, it's so much more than that. Well, that leads me to another question. 
Out of all the ways to worship God that your friend listed, does everyone worship in all of those ways? Definitely not. God made each of us, and that includes making each of us to worship Him in a different way. So, how do I figure out how I'm supposed to worship God? Well, ask God. If you ask Him for help, He'll show you the right ways to live your whole life in worship to Him. I wonder what way God made me to worship Him. I can't wait to find out. <sighs> Looks like Jaden found a Bible link. <gasps> Onward! I was having the hardest time finding a Bible link for you, Bree. But I took a moment and I asked God to help me and he guided me to the perfect video. I can't wait to see it. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. is alive. It was Passover time. Jerusalem was filled with people. When Jesus reached the Mount of Olives, a hill overlooking Jerusalem, he told two of his disciples to find a donkey. They found the donkey and put their cloaks on it. Jesus rode on the donkey, fulfilling the Bible verse that says, Here comes your king, Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. Jesus rode the donkey down to Jerusalem. Many people remembered his miracles and joined him. They put cloaks and palm branches on the road before him to honor him. They hoped that Jesus was God's promised savior. So they shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. The whole world is following him, the Pharisees grumbled. Tell them to be quiet, Jesus. Even if everyone stopped shouting, Jesus replied, the stones would still praise me. Jesus is our God and King. The people of Jerusalem worshiped him because they knew he deserved all the glory and honor they could give him. And if the people didn't worship Jesus, the rocks would, because everything God's created knows how awesome and worthy he is, rocks included. How would a rock worship? You know, I don't know. I always assumed it was something like <gasps> Like that. Interesting. Interesting. I can't thank you both enough for helping me answer my question. I feel like now I have a better understanding of why and how we worship God. I'm not going to forget that God deserves my worship. You know, it was awesome watching other people worship in their natural habitat. And I'll admit, the clothes kind of grow on me after a while. Oh my goodness, I need to go. I don't want to be late for worship night. Oh, have a good time, Jaden. I learned a lot from watching you worship too. Me? Well, just a few minutes ago when you said you were having a hard time finding the right Bible link, but then you took a moment and asked God for help and he led you to the perfect video. You both served me and brought glory to him and according to my notes, those are both two great ways to worship God. Huh, I guess I was worshiping God without even realizing it. You know what, that is so awesome that we can worship God anywhere, not just in a church. Thanks for pointing that out, Bree. Happy to be of service. Hi, I'm Mike and I'm a part of Connect HQ. I have this great verse I wanna share with you. Say it with me like this. Revelation 4:11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. God created everything that is good in this world, and that is amazing. And because of that, He is worthy. He deserves all the glory and honor that we can give Him with our whole lives. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people there couldn't help but worship Him. They understood the truth that Jesus is our God and King. And it's not just people. All of creation knows how worthy Jesus is, even the rocks. 
It's easy sometimes to think that worship is only about singing worship songs and dancing, but there's so much more to it than that. We can worship God by serving others, writing about God, giving to those in need, and in so many other ways. And if you're not sure what the right way to worship God is for you, just ask Him. God made us all to worship in different ways, and He will lead you to the right answer. Don't forget, God deserves my worship. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Bree, are you taking notes on me? I couldn't pass up the chance to witness the making of a real Connect transmission. You don't mind, do you? Nah, it's not the first time I was studied by the scientific community. I really hope that you enjoyed that lesson. Now comes one of my favorite parts of the service. This is the part of the service where if you have never asked Jesus to come into your life and be the Lord of your life, we get to do that now. It's as simple as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit that we've done wrong and that we mess up every single day. B stands for believe. We believe that God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to save us from our sins. And C stands for choose. We're gonna to choose to follow Jesus and let him be the Lord in our life. Now, if you've never made that kind of commitment to Jesus and you would like to do so now, I'm going to lead you in a really easy prayer that you can pray right where you're at. So bow your head and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. I know that I have sinned but thank you for sending a savior to save us from our sins. Please come into my heart and help me to live for you. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you guys all so much for joining us today. I hope that you have an amazing week and I can't wait to see you again next week.